Well, good morning to you. This is a beautiful morning. It's been raining. The sky's a bit cloudy. It's a little bit windy and it's much cooler. But nevertheless, it is excuse me, it's a gorgeous morning. What am I doing here? Okay, I'm just walking down to the post box to collect my mail. And I've been sitting having my morning cup of coffee. Yes, I'm still on a juice fast, but I still have my coffee because I, I'm, I don't follow prescriptive techniques. And I opened up The Guardian online and um, was just catching up with my friend Mark Boyle because Mark, um, back in December of last year, decided to um, live without technology, completely without technology. So he has, well, modern technology, that is. Um, and it's been really interesting just, just reading what Mark has to say about the way that we live now, the way in which our lives have become taken over with technology and we and we really find it very difficult to get away from um, and how that impinges on our lives and how that can create um, a, a deep unhappiness and also a sense of lost time and there's much more of course to these articles and I would suggest that you go online and read them they make very interesting reading and Mark poses questions which we should all really be thinking about and talking about in terms of what our lives, where our lives are going, how we are evolving. Anyway, <coughs> just don't post Mark's now. Just going to check. Um, oh, nothing in there. Um... I, of course, um, have been thinking about all of this for a very long time, as, as I expect most people have. Most people who want to live simpler lives and who want to, you know, actually live their lives and not having um, their lives taken over, taken over by modern technology, which can be very pervasive. Jack, come on. And then, um, I was thinking then of the day that uh, Mark came to visit me, spent a day here. And um, he was interested in what I had done here at Beltona and, and, and the setup and um, the uh, things that I'd put in place, which, uh, although not strictly off-grid, um, were in many ways off-grid and I've talked about this before about my stove and everything that my stove can do which is actually off-grid anyway I'm rambling a little bit I know but the the way in which we live today is not governed by other people it's not governed by um, outside forces. It really isn't. The way we live today is actually governed by ourselves. We choose. We make choices every minute of every day about how we live. My drive has been to create a sanctuary here, first and foremost for Mother Earth, in that I respect completely Mother Earth and all her life and all her life forms. 
But within that comes a, a way of living with the world, a way of living with the world, I must stress that, that is simple. And it's that simplicity which is affordable for everyone. And it doesn't matter where one lives. It doesn't matter if it's a, you know, a place like Beltana that has been co-created with Mother Earth and brought back to as natural and beautiful a state as possible from monoculture fields. Or, as I have lived in the past, in an apartment in London, in a house in the city, in a house in a small town, in a bed sit in a city. Wherever it is one lives, one has the choice and the choice is to live the life they want. Yes, I know that uh, we are governed if we live in the city and we're working, there's a certain time schedule that we have to adhere to. But that doesn't mean to say that you have to live in that state forever. You can use um, that particular way of living as a stepping stone to something simpler. But during the time that you live in that situation, you can live reasonably simply and within that simplicity there are far more um, opportunities opening up to you. For example a simple life doesn't incur spending a lot of money because if we go on the premise that um, Simplicity is, I mean, simplicity is basically free, isn't it? It's a way of looking at the world. As Mark said in one of his articles, he said, you know, rather than importing chai tea from India, he has sage and lemon balm, which are both grown by himself in County Clare, in Ireland. So it's about choices. We can choose to live a more simple life. And those choices are very empowering because those choices have consequences. And it's the consequences of those choices which can then empower us to take things even further. Um, I'm not even going to go up those steps because they're very slippy after the rain. So I'll walk down through the fairy wood. So Mark talks about the joy of time, of having time. And I've heard lots of people say who come to Belton Cottage, but well, I don't have the time. Well if you get rid of a few pieces of technology, i.e. the television, you may find you have several extra hours of time each day. Because it's quite insidious how much time is spent watching a screen because one is drawn into that. You're sort of sucked in. I personally think that um, the most precious gift we can give to ourselves is time. And um, even, um, even when I was working uh, five days a week in London, and it was quite stressful, I was teaching in London, um, I spent my weekends away from time dictates. So I tried not to organise my life around schedules. 
so if I was going to meet a friend, it would be, you know, um, meeting a friend not at a particular time, but maybe at a place with with a group of other friends. So the whole notion of being held a slave to time was something I, I, I tried to steer away from. Mark talks about the beauty of going out and cutting the wood in the morning and fetching the water from the spring well and um, uh, you know, lighting the fire and waiting for the kettle to boil. Well, this is something that I personally love to do and in the past have had to do because I just have not had um, the money to even think of having an electric kettle and running it. So sometimes as well, impoverishment, whether it be forced impoverishment or impoverishment that you decide to explore, can open up that huge window on time, give you a lot more time to to live, just to live. And I think that's the essence of what I took from Mark's articles this morning as I, <coughs> excuse me, as I caught up with reading them. <coughs> he wrote a lovely one in December, a further one, I think it was January, February, and then another one in March. I'm going to go back in and have a look to see if he's written anything else. Very thought provoking. Um, unlike Mark, of course, I'm, I, I try to um, weave a path between technology and simple living. And that's something that I have done continuously for 13 years. And I like to feel that I've begun to come to a, a evolve maybe a nice pattern, a nice pattern for living. I always think there is a middle road, but then that's the woman in me, that's the female in me, that's the mother, that's the grandmother. Um, Jack? Jack? It's gone off the other way. Um, in being a woman and a mother and a grandmother, I have to consider other people. And um, so trying to find a middle path is part and parcel of, of being that person, you see. But I appreciate Mark for exploring what is um, completely the other path. I think it's, uh, it's, it's something that needs to be talked about and developed, definitely developed, um, our approach to living with Mother Earth. So, Mark, I know you won't get round to reading this. Sorry, not reading it, listening to it. But, uh, yeah, it was great. It was great reading those articles. And um, I'm going to drop you a little letter and thank you for those. I think it's... Um, I think it's very necessary that we begin to question. I mean, seriously question, like Mark has done. Not just, you know, verbally question something, but, but set a challenge for himself to live, to live it, rather than just simply question it. And there's the blue sky. Isn't that amazing? Just walking down 
Just walking down the driveway, down to the post box. The weather changes utterly. Too, before I go, I just want to say this, which ties in actually with what Mark has written. Over the 13 years that I've lived here and developed Baltimore Cottage, it has continually come to mind that in many ways the cottage, although I considered it small at the very beginning, is actually too big for me. And I am wanting to build a tiny home. So at some point over the next few months, I'm going to be writing a blog and just putting it out there that anyone with woodworking skills who would like to come and um, spend some time at Beltona and help um, well certainly with the framework I will definitely need help with the framework in building the tiny home but that would be that would be a very interesting experience I would like to have a tiny home set up in the not too distant future so thank you Mark again for a very interesting series of articles. I enjoyed reading those and I hope you get round to reading them. They're certainly worth reading and talking about. Have a lovely day everyone. <laughs>